Hi, is marketing the next big thing in business? Hi, I'm Alex, this is Tammy, and welcome to Conversations with Team Fuqua. <laughs> That's my best impression at, at being part of a newsroom. Um, in all seriousness, though, uh, we are the marketing club here at Fuqua. Um, Hello, <laughs> I'm Tammy, as he said. Um, we are the co-presidents of the marketing club and really excited that you guys are here to join us. Um, a little bit of background about us. We are second years here at Fuqua. Um, really sad to be leaving soon, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about you guys coming here and seeing and doing all the things marketing. Um, my background, I came from prior, uh, prior to business school. I was actually in marketing, doing it in a tech aspect at Amazon and more recently I've been transitioning to CPG, uh, spending the summer at Coca-Cola and going back there for my full-time job. And once again, I'm Alex. Um, I pre-Fuqua was uh, in, in New York working in advertising, though that's not to say that everyone at our club has been in marketing before school. Actually, um, a, large, a large percentage um, comes from any any background you can think of finance military career switcher so um, just because we happen to be marketing nerds before school and will be after school doesn't mean uh, we're, we're not inclusive once about you start that. you never want to leave marketing just putting it out there um, I, uh, I I interned this past summer at, at Procter and Gamble um, and I'll be I'll be going back there um, and uh, I'll say my my uh, involvement with the marketing club has been one of the most impressionable uh, impactful aspects of my time here at Fuqua. Um, it really, really buttresses a lot of the uh, experience you get here at Fuqua, um, really serving as that bridge between what's happening in the academic realm and what your professors are teaching you about marketing and all the intersections with strategy and, and other areas of business. But then the club also helps sort of bind how um, your career search and what you're doing with the Career Center um, uh, how they interconnect, um, interview prep, uh, just helping streamline communication, navigating uh, the long road uh, from when you start to really when you're going to end. Um, so, and I'll just say on a personal note, um, I'm a big American history fan, uh, um, and uh, I think a lot of the people in the club are are human beings, not just sort of robotic marketers or, or business folks, and no that's something we, we try to celebrate here. Yeah, I mean, I guess we were supposed to do a fun fact. Uh, I used to coach volleyball, so that's one of my passions, just mentoring and playing a sport that I love, being active and such. Um, yeah, I have no cool hist. I know nothing about history, but Alex can help you there. Um, on that same note, just to reflect on my experience with Marketing Club, it truly has been one of the most rewarding things that I've done at Fuqua in a way that I've been able to connect with second years when I was the first year to now giving back and being that mentor or someone to walk people through that process who are going through it now in terms of recruiting. Um, it's also just a great way to meet people, to connect with professors, to connect with different companies and a networking and also personal professional sense. So I've really appreciated that aspect. Um, but all in all, through the different events that we have from bringing companies in to teach you what is marketing, how to sound like a marketer. So when you're on the phone with these people who work at these great companies, you're, you talk about conversion, you know what ROI is. Um, none of that matters right now to you. And um, then we'll, again, we'll help you with the interview prep when that becomes applicable, applicable to you. We help you grow relationships with your classmates. Last night we actually had a marketing trivia event where we nerded out on all these different Super Bowl ads and stuff. So that was really fun and we were able to engage with the first year class and also even um, the UNC Marketing Club. So really great to be able to establish those relationships and carry them forward throughout our entire careers and be able to connect with them in the future as well. So really rewarding piece of, um, piece of activity that I've uh, been a part of at Fuqua and um, would love to be able to answer any questions that you guys have. Um, I believe on the right hand side, you guys have a slot where you guys can talk and ask questions. Um, we're here for you to answer any of those. Yeah, and so loose formula here. We're gonna let's we'll talk about things like recruitment and how we work with the career center. What is what our alumni group is like, 
Um, but just pepper us with questions as we go. We've got a thing here where we can we can see them. Um, so I guess um, just the overall overall purpose. One more time, to hit it on the head. Um, we we exist between the academic realm and the the career search realm. Um, Tammy started getting at some of, some of the programming that we put together and what that looks like. Um, there's a few different types of buckets, a few, there's many different types of buckets of events and programs that we call together to really make um, that, that first semester, that first half year for first years as impactful as possible um, through the recruiting season. And then the second half of that first year to make it as impactful as possible for really prep for your internship. Um, and with lots of leadership opportunities and, and, um, and a lot of roles that the second year class really brings in to, um, to buttress the, the first year class. Um, so, so what some of those categories are, Tammy mentioned uh, corporate education is one. So as an example, um, we will have companies like Frito-Lay come and do a store walk um, where we're walking through different aisles and they're talking about why certain products are the way they are and how that, that customer relationship works for a place like Frito. Or um, a company like Mars will come and talk about how to evaluate advertising and um, really that delineation between marketing, which is 360 and business focused, and we're, we're thinking about both top line and bottom line um, and how that's different from sort of evaluating an ad or a piece of creative. Um, so that, that's a sense, I think, for what Corp Ed, do you want to talk to maybe Member Ed? Sure, so Member Ed um, encompasses a bunch of different things. So one, we have an interview prep series that we call Mile. We're extremely proud of it. Uh, people who don't even go into marketing careers end up coming to this career prep session because of three prep session that uh, because it just ends up being so applicable in your career, whether it's recruiting now, recruiting later, or something that just might come up in your interviews. Um, and that's, a, like I mentioned, a three-step process where one, we teach you about marketing behaviorals and how to answer a star question. What pieces of your experience should you incorporate? How long should those answers be? Moving on to more of the technical section, the case studies and such. So sales are up, shares flat, what happened? How are you going to understand how to dive down and the, understand those type of problems and speak intelligently to an employer? Um, and we'll walk you through those different cases, including market sizing, popcorn questions, and um, all the lot. And then we wrap up with the final session, just talking through all those different steps, um, making sure you have a cohesive understanding, and then pairing you with potentially first or second years to help mock you and help you through the recruiting process. Um, so that's one aspect of member ed in the first half of the year. And I think, I think just one point to that too is um, the, the whole like ecosystem here at Fuqua is, is sort of intentional and it's planned in a way that um, sort of the academic program is set up so that by the time you're interviewing for your first intern, you're, you're, you're interviewing for your internship come January or February, your first year, you'll have had half a year and you've gotten in all your real core academic stuff, your accounting class, your strategy class, your marketing class. Um, and then the Career Center doesn't just throw all this stuff at you at once. You don't walk in day one and they're expecting, or anyone's expecting, empl employers aren't even expecting that you are interview ready, that you, that you even know necessarily what you want to do. A lot of people come to business school to pivot. Um, but uh, the Career Center will, will help break down what is a very long road between when you arrive and when you get to sit at that first interview. Um, and they break it apart so that it's manageable and that so you start with your resume, start thinking about uh, your lamp list and what companies you want to focus on, um, how, to, how to write the thank you notes, how to, um, I mean, it, it's yeah. what the EQ that you need to have and what that level needs to sort of look like. But then the club, as Tammy was saying, with these member education events, tries to, again, like, like bind that intersection. So um, we do a lot of interview prep. She mentioned star stories. She mentioned behaviorals. There's a lot of jargon in marketing. and the, Four Ps, four Cs. Yeah. <laughs> You'll know them back to, like, back in your hand. Three, yeah. Well, four Cs. <laughs> um, part, of, part of what, like, like, these member ed events do, though, is, like, 
really make it so that you're comfortable when you're in that interview setting. Um, so just just a point on how all of that intersects. Yeah, um, we're definitely interlinking between the CMC Career Management Center and academics, and then us making sure that we're bridging everything in a three-way intersection and being able to make sure that we're not teaching you the same things, that things are layering on top of each other in the right time, in, t in terms of the right content, in terms of the right timeline and all of that. So um, I spoke a little bit about Mile in the first half of the year, the year, but the second half of the year is then, as Alex mentioned, dedicated to how to be, how to ace your internship, how to use Nielsen data, which is something that many, many big marketing companies use to look at their aggregate data. Um, That's going to be a theme no matter what your business school yeah. life is like. Data, data driven decision making. <laughs> Big uh, data. <laughs> you'll um, get that interview question too someday. Yeah. Um, um, how to work with agencies because everybody, if you're going into a marketing career, no matter what industry, you're going to have to work with different agencies. And um, this kind of brings in some of that corporate education events that. Alex was also talking about, um, we had Zillow come and teach us about how is Facebook being incorporated into advertising nowadays um, in this digital landscape where everything's, are, everything's changing into that omni-channel. So more marketing jargon. But um, that's a little bit of member ed. Um, do you want to mention Weekend Cities? Weekend Cities. And we're, we're kind of skimming the surface. Um, feel free to go to the website. Um, our contact info is up there. Ask any, any questions you might have. But... And Even within member ed, mile. there's a question on mile. Okay, um, <laughs> Tori, sounds impressive. Is the mile question mark three step process student led? Uh, hi, Tori. Uh, <laughs> um, it is it is student led. We're also not doing it in a silo. So actually, we have a mm -hmm. fantastic relationship with the Career Center and um, uh, Molly, who is our 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 point. Um, comes to many of these. She helps in the planning. She has her ear to the ground about what certain comp company sort of temperament or, or um, expectations might be and what maybe sort of some, some lacks in student expectation or, or needs that need to be filled. Um, the marketing core professors also attend these sessions. Yep. Um, so so these, these mile sessions are run by us, but also um, part of sort of what makes Fuqua so great is like, People volunteer their time very freely. We take the Team Fuqua thing very seriously, and I think that permeates to um, not just like how second years and first years and students within the club are um, giving their time back and paying it forward, um, but also you see that really is a theme with, with professors and with the Career Center, certainly, and we'll, we'll get to talking about alumni later on, but um, it, it really seems to be a, 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 a self-selection aspect and I think I mean take something that teamwork thing seriously something very cool about Fuqua is that much of our organizations are all very student-led you'll see it with our clubs you'll see it with our in admissions process the fact that you get interviewed by a second year and such and that's really about a lot of a lot of, about the cultivation of our culture being able to give back but also when we graduate and become alumni we feel that much more connected and the people who are helping you prep for interviews are the ones interviewing you the next year. So um, it is a very cool environment, and it's something that just makes you feel much more closely tied and close-knit with the actual school and the program. So I really appreciate the student-led aspect yeah. of it. And so we have all these formal aspects to what the club puts on. We've got the corporate education events, the member education events. We're going to talk about Weekend Cities, which is where we all travel or where a group travels to New York over uh, fall break. Um, we have uh, a big symposium that we, we uh, coordinate to kick the year off. Um, so we, ha we have a lot of like more, more formalized or, or regimented events. Um, but there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one time, and um, we don't sort of let the let the club get in the way of itself. Where, um, yeah, there's three big mile sessions throughout the first half of the year, but also you'll get to know the second year person who's leading it. Or if you have a question, everyone's accessible. Um, uh, mocking with second years is sort of part of the culture. Um, mocking with each other is part of the culture here. I think that that's something that's left a huge impression for me is I really got this sense 
over the course of my recruiting season and now seeing it from the other side as a second year that um, um, it, it's not, I, I never got the sense that I was competing with other students for certain positions. Um, uh, we would prep together and if I don't get it, I want Tammy to get it. Or um, so I, I, think, I think that helps sort of illustrate the point. I know Marissa had asked here um, if we had uh, more luck securing opportunities through the club or through this, the CMC um, internship opportunities. Um, and so I think to that, to that point, um, um, the, the CMC plays a critical role in helping you find what the right match will be. They help you walk you through how you, the methodology you should even sort of personally use in figuring out what might be a good alignment or a good fit with a company. Um, the club helps with the interview prepping. End of the day, though, I think no matter what school you ever go to or, or what, what um, company you're looking at, like the accountability lies with you. Um, and so to answer your question, CMC does a, a lot, and I, maybe Tammy, you can talk to that, but um, you still got to put in the leg, leg work and, and make sure. I mean, you take stats in the first half of the first year for a reason. <laughs> Think about it statistically and... Um, it makes sense to do both on-campus recruiting and off-campus recruiting. Yeah, I Not think to go on, a... though, like I will say um, the types of companies that come to campus for a marketer are some of the very best. PepsiCo, Frito-Lay, Mars, Procter & Gamble. Like, it's, it's, uh, it, it, there's a lot of really great relationships with, with Amazon. We have alumni, at, at, you name it. So even if they don't come to campus, uh, we have an alumni network that, that can help you get your foot in the door. Yeah, and I mean, my take on your question, uh, it's obvious, it's not obviously, it's definitely a combination. It, think about the CMC as the, the organization that brings all of these companies on campus and Marketing Club in tangent and or combination with uh, the CMC are the ones that help you actually do a good job in c connecting with these companies, networking with them, um, knowing exactly what to say to them, how to talk to them, and then, as Alex mentioned, the interview prep and um, all of those different aspects that are going to help you land the job. But to get that initial connection, a lot of times it is the CMC bringing in these corporate, uh, not corporate presentations, they have, or they are called corporate presentations, where they will do the formal presentation, tell you what roles are open, what is, the, what is it like working at these companies? Anyone who interned there the prior year as a second year and is now a second year will probably be there to talk to you about their internship experience and then you kind of start networking afterwards with these companies. Um, not to say, I mean, we also as Marketing Club bring in some of these same companies to then grow that relationship even further. So Hershey, for example, came to do a corporate presentation to say, hey, we have this robust intern program um, our applications are due on this day, blah, 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 all the different logistical things. But then maybe two weeks later, we'll bring them back and they'll teach a session, a lunch and learn on what is seasonal marketing like and such. So it's an aspect of marketing club that allows you to become a little bit more educated about this marketing space while still giving you another touch point with that company, being able to grow that networking connection and then ultimately get you onto that inter interview close list and then we'll help you and support you there to get that actual offer. So yeah, I think I think one one way to illustrate what Tammy was just saying um, with with like a company like Hershey um, you would attend as a first year their corporate event and um, you're wearing your suit or your your business formal and um, you're making a contact and you're sitting at a sip circle or standing and you're asking <laughs> educated questions, um, but then the club and, and sort of the network we have here tries to also make sure companies like Hershey come to campus and um, allows them and you to interact in a way that is a little bit less, I guess, like black and white, where she mentioned seasonality. Hershey came um, to talk about how um, seasonality trends um, around Halloween and around the holidays in December, how that um, changes how a marketer might play with media budget or play with uh, um, all, all the tools in a, in a marketer set. So, um, And I think the cool thing about that is, I mean, you don't have to be wanting to go to work at Hershey or a CPG company even to want to attend that session. To understand seasonality is something that any retailer or 
uh, tech product company or any industry should probably know something about. So the the companies that we bring in are from, from Marketing Club. It's really exciting to get that additional touch point. But we have very uh, planned programming so that we are teaching our first years or our entire student body things that are going to be really relevant to you in whatever career you choose in marketing, whatever industry. So um, whatever we do, hopefully it's going to help you either get that job or do a great job at that job. Tammy touched on something too, quick tangent, that is super important and goes into how we define ourselves and what our mission is. Um, Firmly believe here that marketing is not just consumer packaged goods. Brand management at a place like P&G, which is what I'm doing after school and is my my dream, is not all that marketing is. Um, marketing is in tech and in healthcare, um, and yes, in, in packaged goods. So whatever the whatever the industry, the, um, we try to make sure that um, what we're pulling together for folks is transferable and, and applicable. Um, it's one of the reasons these mile sessions are, are such a hit is because. Um, uh, it's it's just it's good practice. It's a good way to unpack what can be an intimidating uh, uh, recruitment process. Um, so I just we we yep. want to be clear that CBG is an important part of what we are and have been and will be, but also not not the only element. We're marketers first. <laughs> Marketing is a function, not an industry. Um, that's a question that we actually get a lot is uh, how do we work with other clubs and other industries and all all that we try to work very closely with the other clubs that are more industry focused for example the tech club or the healthcare club and such Um, we as you mentioned we mentioned we have the mile program which should help you be a great uh, be great in marketing interviews across all industries but then if you want to say go for a product management uh, PM role or something then you can do one additional session that's hosted by the tech club that will be teaching you exactly what's different or the very specific information that you might need to know for a tech interview and such. And we we cross promote, we work together, we collab on all of these type of workshops so that you're not getting repeated information or something that is relevant to you in one session and not in the other. So we try to work as closely as possible with all these other clubs and then run as many different clubs at these inter- intersections so that you're prepared for either all industries or whatever industry that you might be interested in, whether that's CBG or something else. Tammy brings up yet another fantastic <laughs> point, which is one of the other value adds the Marketing Club brings is um, uh, st- uh, streamlining, helping streamline communication. So, um, you know, I, th- I thought coming from my, my job in, in New York before school that I was on top of email management and time management, and I joined every club ever, it felt like, and um, suddenly um, with the academic responsibilities, the recruiting responsibilities, the extracurricular responsibilities, life still goes on and, and life responsibilities, um, you get, there's a deluge of just stuff that gets thrown at you, and the marketing club helps sort of wean out what is most important, um, what is most salient, what is maybe most time sensitive um, to, to really help um, help make sure that you're seeing both both the forest and the trees, but that you're looking at the right one at the right time. Um, so I thought, good point, Tammy. Thank you. <laughs> um, just to, so very quick before we get we go off this, because I do want to talk about alumni. Um, is um, some of the other programming we put on, um, and feel free to to ask us afterwards if you have any follow up questions. But this week in cities trip that we had mentioned, um, mm-hmm. a, a group. Uh, uh, my year went to New York. We went to New York again last year over fall break. Uh, met with a, a slew of companies in a whirlwind of a, a half week there to see what it's like um, on the ground um, at these companies. Um, Fuqua is here in Durham, which is fantastic. Um, but that means <laughs> companies are coming to us to meet us, um, to interview with us here often. And so um, it's a great opportunity to go and see what Twitter headquarters looks like, or what AB InBev in, in uh, uh, south part of New York looks like, or what have you. I think, I mean, Weekend Cities, as even if you don't want to work in New York or something, is just one of the most incredible experiences because, I mean, being a student 
how often, I mean, or a professional, how often do companies just open up their doors and have you walk in, walk around their buildings, really experience their culture, and then spend it like a good chunk of their hour or the day just talking to you and asking, answering your questions, whether it's a panel or a presentation and such. It really gives you a good idea of, is this the right industry that I want to go into? Is this a culture that I'm looking for? Um, and a lot of these, I mean, a company like uh, Pepperidge Farm, I mean, it's something that was never on my radar before, but could be now because I really enjoyed that session, recognized that the people there and the people I was interacting with, was they were all a lot of fun, and the strong Fuqua alumni network there was another polling factor. So um, the Weekend Cities trip is just a great opportunity for you to, even if you're not interested in that geography, just to better understand that culture and that environment of what you might be going into. And thus is just another aspect that Marketing Club tries to layer on and help you find that perfect job for you and get you to where you want to go. Um, want to no talk questions. alumni? No questions. Come on. Yeah, volley, on. Volley qu I guess we're, <laughs> we're preempting questions with this incredible Q&A. Yeah. <laughs> um, so one, one other thought I, I just wanted to make sure I, I guess I articulated at some point or, over the course of this is that um, um, Fuqua, Fuqua is a great school. The people are great. The, the institution is supportive. The thing that I've enjoyed most about business school, let's do that. Thing most enjoy and thing that we wish we would have known you going have to make in. This hard for me. Um, but something I, I've, I've really, really valued has been um, when you are getting your MBA, you are, I mean, it, again, information is coming from all angles. You're, you're, you're doing a lot of, a lot of homework. A lot. You're, you're growing in a lot of ways that, that, um, um, that is academic or otherwise. And um, I just have found it really impactful to have this sort of supplemental education happening at the same time where in a in an innovation class we're learning about um, the future of automotive and the marketing club is helping bring GM to campus and they're willing to talk about that or in your marketing strategy class um, you're pulling apart what Procter & Gamble did to introduce a product somewhere and then P marketing club helps bring P&G to campus or um, in strategy, in first year, we're learning about like DeVita and Cardinal Health and, and just like institutional changes that need to happen. And we've got a relationship with a, a company like Cardinal. So um, the, the degree to which these companies um, help sort of fill in the color of what you might be learning in a classroom environment, I think was just a pleasant, really elegant surprise for me. And it's something mm -hmm. I've enjoyed. Yeah. Um, for me, something that I've enjoyed, truly the people, the network, and the support that you get from Team Fuqua. I mean, I know admissions says Team Fuqua a lot, and I feel like it's not just an admissions thing. It's something that we do live and breathe every day and incorporate into the way that we interact with everyone to, I mean, how we plan events. Team Fuqua, I mean, when I was a first year, means... I would reach out to all these second years just out of cold emails being like, hey, maybe interested in what you did this summer. Please talk to me. Uh, please help me. And I don't think anyone said no. I mean, everybody was willing to take out hours in their day or week and just talk to us about their experience, whether it was positive or not, and being able to walk, the, walk me through why, why they made that decision, how they got there, and what have you. Um, so the, the fact that the network there here is so strong is really something that I'm going to remember. Um, something that we actually kicked off this year for the first time is uh, something called we call Marketing Mondays. And every Monday during lunchtime, whether it's a table in our Fox cafeteria area or in a classroom, there's just a group of second year marketers who live and breathe and nerd out about marketing, but we're all there as essentially as a mar uh, marketing office hours so that any first year or second year can come and ask us questions and it could be career related you could be doing your resume or you could be editing your cover letter or just asking general advice or you just want to sit and get to know us as people um hang yeah. out with us this past week we just talked about super bowl ads so. yeah. <laughs> which love i mean I turned up the commercials every single time and everyone in the room got 
pissed at me because <laughs> it was louder than the actual game. But um, yeah, I mean, the support system is truly there. So I think that's the one thing that I'm really going to miss and my top enjoyable thing I enjoyed. Well, before we get to uh, uh, things we wish we knew beforehand, Tammy, you talked about <laughs> Uh, where you were. You talked about where you are. Let's talk about where you're going. Uh, Marissa has a question. Tammy, touching on your point about company culture, would you mind speaking more about your previous role at Amazon? What area of marketing were you in? How was the culture? What drove you to move to Coca-Cola after graduation? Sure. Um, it's a loaded question. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed my time working, especially in this tech space where there is clearly so much happening. I mean, we're sitting in class and I feel like almost every other case or topic, at some point Amazon always gets brought up, which is pretty exciting to know that I was at the center of all that and being able to actually think, oh, I kind of knew a little bit of that um, news that you guys are all just kind of finding out about now. So I mean, uh, that was really exciting because we were in a space where you had to think innovatively all the time. You had to think ahead of the curve almost, and it was an environment that really pushed you to do your best. Um, I was actually on the retail side of the business working on non-perishable grocery consumables, and um, marketing was more of on, more on the content side of being able to push out what our sponsor, I could call it sponsor companies or our vendors, um, would want us to push out in terms of um, what categories are we uh, in particularly focusing on on this term. Do we have a holiday around the corner and how should we uh, prepare for that? So creating campaigns for New Year, New You, and then featuring General Mills and uh, Kellogg's with their new launch of Kashi or something. Um, so more, it was definitely more on the content side, on the retail end, but very it worked very closely with vendor managers, uh, in-stock managers and such, which um, are a lot of the roles that my classmates are going into now. So it's really interesting seeing that cross between um, some of our pre-MBA careers and post um, and being able to actually help people through that process and talk about that experience to them as well. Um, speaking about, I think you asked a little bit about culture and then why I decided to transition. Did you yeah, have something to jump? Before you get to culture too, yeah. I think um, one, one point um, that Tammy made too is like she had she had this background at, at Amazon that where they were set up in a certain way and part of what as a first year you will sort of explore or the discovery phase you go through is what what kind of marketing even you yeah. think you want to be exposed to um, so some companies might be more focused on top line stuff just just grow revenue just just make like oversee the ads the media other companies might be more uh, profit based so you're also thinking about um, cost or uh, you're, you're thinking about how operations and mm -hmm. certain customer teams influence what you're doing but I think a red thread no matter what kind of marketing uh, path you find sort of you're most interested in is that um, you're going to be working uh, cross-functionally no matter what and um, it's it's been impactful for me at Fuqua to one kind of go through that discovery phase and um, have the space and the advice and the wisdom of my peers and support network here to dig into what kind of companies I was most interested in, um, but then also to um, have that from other classmates in the club and hear about their different backgrounds. Um, so, so quick color <laughs> commentary there. Yeah. Why don't you tell me about culture aspect? <laughs> of um, culture at Amazon, I mean, I'm sure you've read a lot about it over the news and such, but I mean, it's all really based on your experience. I had a really phenomenal manager who looked out for me, wanted me to progress in my career, actually um, was very supportive in whatever decision that I made, whether I wanted to continue on with Amazon and grow my career there or go to the, go the business school route since there are so many MBAs at Amazon. And um, that was a great learning experience as well. So Twist Marissa was your, Marissa Chow was your manager. Nice, nice. <laughs> mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it, it definitely was a company that pushed me hard. Um, there were some late hours and such, but again, it was, it's a great experience being with people who are incredibly intelligent and willing to also put in the work to 
be there, make changes happen, um, be at the forefront of all of this change that's happening. Um, that's part of the reason why I decided to stay in marketing because I feel that there is so much happening in this realm. Um, like thing, like consumer trends are changing. You're, you're like people are becoming cord cutters, and like how are you going to advertise to these people? How are you going to speak to these different segments? That was all really exciting. So being at the forefront of everything um, is really cool. And then, um, but I mean, there is a transition here in that I did end up going to business school and I am going into the same function or not different function, same, still, I'm still in marketing, but um, in a different industry. And there are reasons behind that. So um, why did I decided to go down that route? Well, one, I was in sort of content marketing, which is what I mentioned. And that was a little narrow in scope in what I wanted to go to. And um, being able to kind of understand the whole picture, set strategy behind marketing, make big decisions that are going to have high impact across different, maybe the entire the company, maybe the future of um, a brand or different cross-functional teams. That's what I wanted to be a part of. I wanted to be sort of call it at the hub of the wheel, which is a lot of what you see in CPG. Um, and then I wanted to really walk out of any experience that I had saying, yeah, I know marketing, like give me a problem and give me some time and I'll know how to solve it. So it was really about broadening out my experience and being able to look at things like owning a P&L and making decisions that are gonna hurt my bottom line or help my top line and making those decisions on like what is the best trade-off is this worth the ROI that I'm going to be getting or is this great brand exposure um, working with cross-functional teams um, using consumer insights to develop new products all of those things were things that I had briefly touched in my past marketing life but wanted to make have a bigger impact in in my post MBA career and um, Alex, I'm sure you can mention about talk about your experience going into Procter Gamble and that P and L ownership. But at the end of the day, I want to be able to confidently say that I'm a really strong marketer, and I felt that CBG would give me the right training ground to get me there, um, as well as the experience that of general management and um, the stuff that's going to make maybe one day give me that VP, CMO, CEO experience um, that. I don't think I would have found without this whole MBA journey. I'm gonna send you this link if it's still live that day. Like, <laughs> remember when you said. On, and, all right, so Appreciate I appreciate it. So Tammy said one thing that I um, that I think I've been pretty passionate about, um, um, which is marketing is just like, it's like an interesting time to be in marketing. Um, uh, she mentioned you know how how long has Coca Cola been around? When was Coca Cola like? Like, 125. I don't know, 100 years? 100, like, small countries haven't existed that long. Um, yeah. More people probably work for Coke than I imagine, like, are are in certain cities or in certain countries even. There's small only ones. two Lithuania. countries that don't have Coke. Um, so fact. these are, yeah, so, but, like, so that that brand could be antiquated. That company mm. could could be just stodgy and old. But part of what marketing gets to do is, as the Internet changes things and as... Uh, communication channels change, and as behaviors change, and as your 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 target changes, um, as the competitive landscape changes, the marketer has to be at the hub of the wheel and has to figure out how to how to make the business run um, on the cost side, but also like like the the that battle for perception isn't just happening with Super Bowl ads, though Coca Cola is there, but also in customer relationships in stores and at retailers and what retailers and where. So um, I think I think that's probably shared throughout a lot of folks in our club is there's just there is there is a passion for what's happening in marketing and it's something that uh, that I think galvanizes us. Yeah. And I mean as much as I was excited about all that stuff happening at Amazon and being at the forefront that doesn't mean that I don't think that's happening at Coca-Cola either. I mean, it's a company with a rich history, but at the same time, it's still innovating. I was actually on the innovation team this summer um, working within brand management and adapting to all these changes. So it's exciting to be at a company that has all this history, but also is adapting for the future, knows that uh, full sugar 
Coca-Cola Red Classic might not be what people are drinking 100 years from now. So making sure that portfolio is changing, and I think that's really exciting. So um, maybe not the forefront of technology, but at the forefront of beverages. <laughs> Cool. Um, so, Tana, I appreciate tell me, that you're not a manager in hiding. I see that you <laughs> made a note. Um, Tammy, if you could go back in time, what is one thing that you wish you had known before you started your, your journey, your um, MBA journey? Sure. So, I think you guys are in a really good place and timeline right now to be listening to us because for me, in February, I had not quit my job yet. I had not um, really made that transition yet. And so it's a good opportunity to really start taking notes of what you're doing in the workplace and what you have achieved and such already. Because um, as great as your resume is and it got you into business school, by the time we're done with it, it's going to be 20 times better. And you're going to want all those key figures that you did and you were able to accomplish at work to be able to be transformed and put into your resume, into your cover letter, into your star stories and interview responses and such. And it's going to be really hard a year from now to be like, oh yeah, like I really impacted sales, but I don't know how many percent that was. So that was um, something that was a little bit difficulty. I mean, even thinking back to examples of when was the last, when, when would tell me about a time you had a conflict with a coworker and such? And I was really scratching my head trying to think what happened, um, what was the scenario, what did I do to fix it, and what did I learn from that lesson and such? And so if you're actually in the job now, it's going to be much easier for you to remember those things and just take notes some um, or uh, try to remember or put it in some sort of locked closet and be able to re reference that lot, lot, yeah. yeah reference that stuff later i I completely agree with tammy the 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 fact that MBA gives you that and getting an MBA gives you purposefully that a little bit of that shoulder room or elbow room to um, go back and think and and reflect on your journey up to this point and what that story is supposed to be, which is particularly important for marketing, by the way, because if you can't market yourself, what does that mean about uh, uh, how you We're might work with a brand? We're all about storytelling. Um, but, but also, I think, I think the, the whole institution and experience here pushes you to um, not only reflect on it, but like really process um, um, certain events in your life so that um, when someone's asking you in an interview, um, Tell me about a time you've worked in teams, or worked, or tell me um, about um, a time that you've uh, experienced uh, some sort of uh, interrelational conflict. Um, you have not just uh, sort of something that comes to mind, but you've processed it in a way that you realize like what that takeaway is and what you've learned from it. And it's, I just, I, I know that's going to be invaluable. I know Christopher here had a question. Yep. Um, and this is a question we get a lot, and I'm glad you brought it up. I was actually going to prompt Alex. Um, so we are not your average people in that we actually came into business school with pa pa uh, previous marketing or advertising background and such. Um, but that is usually not the case. There are a lot of career switchers. So Alex, how does someone who doesn't have a marketing background get interested or into background? How does the curriculum um, and marketing club help to create different experiences within the field, and how do you have you enjoyed them? Great question, Christopher. Um, so, <laughs> so first, the the, the core marketing class um, um, is is written in a it, it's uh, created in a way that you don't you don't have to be a marketer to get value out of it. Um, so, so don't worry about it from an, an academic perspective. Um, the, the, the club, um, and, and there's a lot of great um, uh, courses that you can take after that, that core class in the first semester of your first year, um, particularly love marketing strategy and marketing of innovation. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a lot of great content uh, or a lot of great courses in marketing that you can pursue based on your interests. Um, but then I, I'd, I'd say from the, the, the club perspective, we try to, um, I mean, this is a student-run club. so. Um, you know, one, one really impactful thing that happened to me over the course of the first year, I took a cabinet role where um, as part of our weekly newsletter, hmm. uh, me, and a, me and a classmate here would uh, uh, really, really um, vet through the news of the week and try to figure out what the most important, um, um, impactful, 
uh, news events were for, for our club, for our constituency, for, for the people around us, and what, and what the takeaway is or what that impact is. And you don't have to be a marketer to read um, Ad Age and, and realize that um, you know, you know, something, something that Amazon did in changing their marketing organization, um, that, that that could have an impact in how you think about um, channel marketing or, or content marketing. Or you don't have to be an industry expert to be able to um, start practicing how to evaluate certain creative or advertising. So, mm -hmm. reading Media Week and figuring out what your what, what's your favorite ad, or why maybe um, a, an element of marketing performed poorly. Um, we would we would synthesize that and broadcast it throughout the club to get people thinking about that kind of thing. Um, so, so that's just my experience. There's. A, a ton of other ways that you can get involved through the club to help uh, round out anything. But uh, again, um, em employers and the school and the club doesn't expect you to come in as a marketer. Um, the mission is to make sure you're leaving as a marketer, as the best marketer. Um, so so yeah. we, we take it seriously that we're going to try to help get everyone there. I mean, if people came in with marketing experience and knew what they were doing, we would have nothing to do. Um, we are happy because when people come in and don't have that experience because that's when we can help you make that transition into becoming a great marketer. Otherwise, we wouldn't exist and um, that would be really sad for us even though that means there's more marketers in the world. Um, but I mean, in all seriousness, I mean, we have all these we have events that are trying to help gauge your interest in marketing as well as well as a lot of the events that are hosted by the cmc for example um in the very very beginning of the year one of the first weeks in the first few weeks the cmc holds career intensives which are literally uh industry or function focused so it could be marketing could be consulting it could be uh social impact um what have you and they are, the CMC brings in speakers to talk from different fields to just talk about their experience. It's a non-recruiting event. You're actually not allowed to network with these people after the different events and stuff. But for marketing, for example, you'll have someone from Twitter, you'll have someone from um, Profit, which is a marketing consulting firm, you'll have someone from a CPG firm, and they'll all talk to you about your experience, of their experience in marketing, and it'll help you kind of gauge, oh, does that sound interesting to me? Did I like that presentation? And since they're all kind of in the same week with all the other intensives, you'll be able to compare and see, oh, maybe, I mean, marketing, that was interesting, but these general management rotational programs actually sound like the best fit for me or something. So these intensives are great in terms of just learning about the actual industry or function. Um, immediately after that, Marketing Club will kick off something very similar called the Marketing Symposium, where we start bringing in companies and kicks off recruiting. So these companies will come in, give case studies on what they've, problems that they've solved, a day in a life, all of that, and this is your first interaction with these companies. They um, will educate you about what it's like to work for them as well as what's happening in the industry. There's usually a big keynote speaker, and I mean, if one, that interests you at all, that starts your interest in marketing as well, as well as also helps with the networking and all the recruiting down the line. Um, and then we'll just throw in other events throughout the year that are uh, generally just fun for marketers or great in terms of experiential learning, which is also one of our cabinet positions or responsibilities. Um, one of which is called the Brand Challenge, where we literally give you product, like hundreds of boxes of product or something, it could be like, 200 bottles of Febreze and you have to figure out a way to best market it in a certain scenario to all of our students and it happens during Fuca Friday. It's a lot of fun because it's our entire student body walking around and people are having different games at different booths and stuff but I mean if you enjoy doing that stuff, thinking about that stuff, you start knowing that maybe this is the right fit for you. Um, and then I had one more thing, which is we also help find and um, support and sponsor you to go to different case competitions, which one will test your interest in marketing as well as um, your current competency in marketing, and then give you a lot of the skills that are going to be applicable, applicable to your interviews and um, gets you to start thinking about 
different problems that you'll see in marketing, even maybe before the marketing core classes have even started. Yeah, and I think I think too, um, we try to encourage folks and and um, people are reading what's what's in in the media. People are um, chatting with with professors, with other students um, about um, sort of like discovering ways to to build on your experience as a marketer, but also like I'll, I'll say like marketers are storytellers and it doesn't matter if you weren't in marketing before this if you can tell the story about why you're going into marketing and what it is that that's driving you to do it and make it cohesive and sticky um, then you're not gonna have a problem I mean something we stand by at Fuqua also is just this idea that um, like like our diversity of of background of education of opinion of interest is part of what makes us stronger um, and so you know I you, you don't you don't have to be from advertising or from Amazon before school here to um, really flex your marketing muscles uh, if anything you make us stronger by bringing that diversity of opinion and background um, so it's it's for it's 420 um, encourage you to ask any other questions you might have um, I think maybe to to um, sort of put a cap on it before we, we close out here and we'll look out for questions. But um, Tammy, did you answer what you wish you had known before yes. you started? <laughs> Dang, okay. Um, I'll Quick plug um, uh, before we keep answering questions and such. Um, a lot of information is on our website. So there's an FEQ section. Um, you can, I think, just Google search it. It should come up. We are revamping the website, so if you're in some weird transitions and stuff in the next month, um, it's going to be bigger, brighter, happier, uh, more exciting, but um, <laughs> we're excited about it. Um, the information should be on there as well as a contact us uh, information, like a form that will go straight to us as well as different members of our cabinet. So if you have very specific questions that you think of later or don't want to ask now, you can definitely reach out to us there and we can maybe set up time or email back and forth and such. Um, follow us on Instagram and see exactly what is happening on campus and what sort of corporate sponsors we have, the different events that we're partaking in um, and that we're excited about to share out to different students. Um, I actually find that it's a great way to stay on top of just what's happening um, this time of year and such. Um, but yeah. So I, th I think um, the, uh, it's always good to end on something memorable. So I, I will share and maybe Tim, if you want to share <laughs> Um, just one one story that stuck out that, that has sort of stuck out for me, um, and that is we we didn't get to talking about just how great our alumni are, um, but um, I I spent the first half of the year going through the recruitment process, second half of the first year prepping for my 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 internship, um, and I was absolutely blown away over the course of my internship to to realize how giving. Fuqua folks are even after graduation. Um, folks who weren't on my immediate teams, multi three actual uh, different brand folks at, at um, that summer internship sat down with me after work for hours and helped me uh, craft my my story. It made me think more critically about certain elements of the the projects I was working on over the summer. Um, that wasn't something they had to do; it was something they wanted to do, and. Um, it, it really left a, a positive impression for me, and, and I tell you what, I'm looking forward to giving my time that freely to Fuqua students when I'm an alumni, which is coming up way too fast, by the way. <laughs> We're not talking about um, that. But, uh, Tammy, do you have maybe, you want to end it on a, a story? I mean, sure. I mean, a lot of it is really echoing what Alex just said. Our culture is truly Fuqua first. Um, maybe they don't want to say that in front of the company, but, I mean, when they talk to us, they are definitely if you go first they I mean um, when you have different competing offers and such which is a great position to be in but definitely a hard decision our Fuqua alum will very transparently tell you what are the pros and what are the cons and what I think might be the best step for you if you're thinking seven years down the line I mean um, who knows where we're going to be in five years ten years and if it's going to be at that same company but if it's not at that same company maybe let maybe this company is going to give you the right skills and that's not our company but because i'm a fuqua first person i'm going to share with you that this is 
where I think your best learning is going to happen. So um, totally agree that our Fugo alum are amazing. Um, and that's something that I've been blown away again and again and again by. Um, but in addition to that, I mean, for me, a personal example, I was uh, re-recruiting, just looking around a little bit for this per the second year for my full-time role, just to make sure that I wanted to, or that I was ending up where I really wanted to be. And there was a company that I had just started looking into, but didn't know a lot about. And I had emailed our marketing strategy professor, just asking for a little bit of information, as well as just maybe, does she know any of the competitors of that? Um, company, uh, what other areas or what other companies in that space can I look into? And um, she, I thought she would be a great resource because she runs the CMO survey. And so she is very well in touch with a lot of these top companies. And she actually responded and she was like, hey, I co-authored a, a book with the founder of that company. Do you want me to write you a recommendation? And um, it just blew my mind away. Just one that I had made this big impression with one of my professors, something that I actually never achieved before in my undergrad, um, that she had remembered my work and was willing to put in the time to make sure that I was progressing in my career. And then, I mean, I had written a draft of maybe what it might look like in terms of that recommendation, and she came back with a two and a half page recommendation of all the things that I didn't even realize that I had done that had stood out to her and that she wanted people to know about. So um, I had really appreciated that, making that connection with faculty. Um, we still today, I mean, correspond. I plan volleyball games for our uh, student body class and we planned a student versus faculty game and she was part of it. Um, so I mean it's it's the alumni, it's the club, it's the professors, it's the CMC, all of that coming together. Um, it's I don't want to graduate. <laughs> so there's the CTA. Uh, thank you for the past 60 minutes but our call to action for you is uh, uh, we don't want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come to Fuqua, join the marketing club. Find us on Orxync. <laughs> Thank you guys very much.